Stories Podcast, your number one show for everything guitar. Hey everybody, I'm in Nuremberg, Dan's in Nuremberg, Dave Wiener's in Nuremberg. Dave's about to go on stage in a few hours, so we grabbed him quickly to have a quick chat. And uh, we've already been chatting, we should have recorded that, Dave. Yes, we should have. Oh well. Never mind, we'll say it all again. Yeah, it was, it was worth better the second time. <laughs> Actually, I should say thank you for inviting us for the food. Yes, yes. oh, no problem. What did you have, Dan? Uh, pasta and a couple, a little bit of chicken. It was good. Delicious. It was good. I noticed Steve Vai got a pot of salt. We didn't get salt. Did you get salt? I think it was on the table. Um, but but hey, thank you for coming back. You've, you've been on the podcast already. People love the episode. And you said that you received some emails. Yeah, back. they really enjoyed it. That was a good one. Yeah. yeah. I think the other day I told you I still got the, uh, there'll be a link to it somewhere. There, <laughs> wherever they put it. <laughs> I still have a, a posted with uh, one of the statements from from an interview where he said the numbers are just leverage, because to me that was that that meaning of that sentence was was so much deeper, and I mm -hmm. kind of well, gravitated back to that kind of sentence, and, and you know, it, it just had an impact, a major impact on me. So they're important, no doubt, yeah. um, because we have put importance on those numbers. Correct. As, uh, modern social media society correct so how people have taken it for their own meaning correct the problem though is a lot of people are putting that first above artistic integrity i would say most people i would say most people i would say that most of the internet is so cringeworthy yeah and all about the shot and the gram and this just the smoke and mirrors and the look of the situation instead of the actual substance of the situation you know and that's fine do whatever makes you happy because that's all we're here for but <laughs> I, I don't know you know as an artist i've always the only thing that's ever mattered to me was completing the song completing the record you know 10 second clip 30 second clip 60 second clip we all do it but there's got to be more to 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 provide and uh, the foundation of what that art is about and even going further, I think uh, if, you, if you take that to a wider perspective, like a company's perspective, for instance, without the people, I mean, if you, if you only look at the numbers of the turnover, for instance, or revenue or something, that's like a snapshot of a period. But if you have a look at the grand scheme at the people that spend their life at a company that contribute to success, or like Andy as a, as a content creator that spent their life to kind of create so something that has substance and, and go the extra mile. So just, you know, shitting out every, something, you know, they came up with on the toilet. <laughs> I've been known to shit that a few things. <laughs> no way, you get you get it. It's like like that's a good record time. <laughs> you know, I've been known to shit out something. <laughs> it was a Ben Falls track. <laughs> but I, I agree with that. I think we're like I'm hoping that we're reaching this pinnacle of the things you've just been describing, where people reach reach this opinion where they hang on a minute, nothing has substance anymore, and we need to go back to having some substance. And I hope we're going to the pinnacle and we're coming back down that hill to integrity and substance and artistry it worries me that we're not and to talk about numbers a bit further um if you looked at my numbers you'd think that things weren't going too well but they actually are i mean i'm sat here with you i'm sat here with dan and, and, and i'm having a good life but if people judge me by my numbers right now they'd say andy was doing pretty badly well that's the thing you know it, 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 it's it's you know content or it didn't happen yeah. life happens no matter what yeah. if you take a picture or a video <laughs> are you living the life or are you living for that little thing <laughs> and you can be you can't escape it anymore no. mobile rocket walking around the city center today and you see young young people just you know all right here's the shot and i'm gonna do this and they've got they've got the poses down and it's it's all for that mm -hmm. instead of did you enjoy you know yeah. your day did you enjoy that Thing you were standing in front of, I, what again? Whatever makes you happy. It's a different. It's a different. I'm old now, so, and getting older by the second, and grumpier by the second. <laughs> yeah, she's definitely grumpier than when we were talking earlier. He wasn't this grumpy earlier. He was very positive. I, I think I'm. You know, I I um, try to be positive, but it's 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 um, yeah. What's well, life? Life is what it is. I don't. I don't worry. About it. I'll take it. Uh -huh. I don't, I'm not living for somebody else's needs. You know, I need to. I need to be rebirthed. 
we're good. Come on. Bye bye. You'll stay at home. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking about more positive side of things, I mean, um, with the pandemic kind of somewhat behind us, you know, on tour, uh, how was it for you also from a mental perspective to finally be able to be on stage and interact with people instead of being locked down in, in your basement? Kind I of loved it. COVID. I loved lockdown. I loved it. <laughs> really? I am a homebody. Okay. Um, I love to play live. That's the reason I, I love music. Um, and that's a contradiction, mm -hmm. but I loved having a valid excuse to not do anything. Oh, I mean, it's true. I've been like, we were talking about earlier. I, I have been full throttle since I was 10 years old. So 35 years, full throttle. And I'm, I, I'm, I've recognized I'm ready for a, uh, break. Okay. So COVID was a little sneak peek of that. And it was like, oh my, I don't have to go to any events sure. or, you know, sit on a plane for 15 hours to do this or, or whatever it is, uh, you know, which sometimes is great, but I'm over sitting on a plane for a long, long time anymore. For, uh, but that's just where I am. You know, everybody's in their own place. No, definitely. I enjoyed it. I, uh, not COVID and the, and the, and the <laughs> horrendous situation we saw that we've all been living in, that, uh, the positive thing about it is that we have all experienced it and now we have a new set of skills and uh, mindsets that we're able to handle things more than well i feel so that's really like the real takeaway from it i uh would be lying if i didn't say i enjoy just being over i put out a new acoustic record collection of stories volume two and that happened during that time and wrote a full record with this band that I'm focusing on in my near future. Uh, so the time was really important. Well, as I think more than anything now, it's, I don't like having my time wasted. I never have. It's always been the, kind of the crux of my existence is just time. And having a, an abundance of time, I looked at it as, uh, wow, it's just a great opportunity to finally go through a to-do list mm -hmm. and get, you know, get things done as some, you know, somewhat scary as the whole situation was, uh, and, you know, kind of remains, but, uh, we're all going to be dealing with it for years. Definitely. Yeah. I think, um, to go back to what we talked about earlier, about the numbers being leveraged, there are two things, there are two main sentences I live my life by at the moment. That's numbers of leverage, not to worry about them, but also that time being the only real currency. Uh -huh. And as a father whose kids grew up and my kids are now five and coming seven, um, seeing, I, I know it's a cliche, but seeing life through their eyes as, and, and during this time has helped me really take a new perspective where I think that they're, I'm benefiting more from their life than they are at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> they're just full on at it and uh, but also playing music and, and, and throwing themselves into, into new activities. And that's great for me. This is a new activity. This is the first time I've seen Steve by that. Wow. We're seeing we guys like that for Um. We'll be brought to your place. <laughs> Actually, the show is so much quieter now. Sorry, I don't want to know. I'm checked. Keep going, but we'll, we can come back to the show. No, I just wanted to say that the show is going to be phenomenal. I am so jacked for some music. And I genuinely thought I'd be missing a singer. Hand of hearts, I thought I'd be missing it. Fair strand of music. True. But there was not, it, I only saw the sound check and nothing was missing. It was like there was emotion. There was groove. There was musicianship. There was all that stuff that probably obvious to you watching this as he saves it but for me it's a different world music with steve i mean he's such a i've always said he's the most vocal guitar player he's a vocal guitar player he, he is a composer he knows how to uh take advantage of dynamics and emotion in every single note and style in every single note I, that's that's probably the biggest takeaway I've had from being in this band, you know, being around Steve for all these years is, you know, if you're not going to give a note meaning, what's the point? And you'll see that in my playing. Oh, I'm not a technician. I'm not a shredder. I'm I, I don't I don't like to play that stuff um, because just with just scale that does nothing for me. I need rhythm. I need uh, some sort of style, some sort of thing in there. Uh, and if that means playing slow and sparsely, but with, you know, something that hits home, I love that stuff. 
And I think Steve does that extremely well in that tread. You know, I know it's a, it's such a cliche to say, uh, and they're very general things to say, but uh, he does that stuff so well. He just makes that guitar speak. And it's really great. So you're, you're, I have heard though, you know, people dragging their girlfriends to the show. <laughs> they they start saying, "When when does the singing?" <laughs> I don't get that because I was I was both the boyfriend and the girlfriend and I was dragging I was dragging myself to the show but certainly um, I'm not sure I was expecting I was ready I was primed emotionally for something and I I got it already so I can't wait for the actual show. Um, <laughs> totally great. I, I I prefer watching you guys so the the the, first, the not mainly the main artists but the supporting people because that's where I would put myself. I'm thinking what is he doing and enjoying sitting behind those lead lines um, and not being any less than, certainly not. And there's just a connection in that band that I really felt was um, accessible. And I didn't, I didn't feel that musically when I listened to the record. So hearing it live is... It's, it's really interesting, especially with somebody like Steve's music, because, you know, yes, I mean, his, his stuff is so out front in the mix and it's so out front in the band and et cetera. But, um, you know, I've got a bunch of videos on YouTube where it's just I showed... Uh, really, I was just rehearsing for a previous tour, but I'm playing through the rhythm stuff. And you see con comments all the time. Oh, I never knew that was happening mm -hmm. back there because it's not like we're sitting there on eighth notes. Mm -hmm. One and two and three and four, <laughs> one and two and three and four, you know, nothing wrong with that at all. And if that's what the part calls for, that's what it calls for. But that's not Steve's music. And it's really interesting. There are really interesting elements in what I'm doing, what Philip is the, the baseline. Listen to the bass slides tonight. They are. There's some I felt really awesome <laughs> stuff. Yeah, you could yeah, feel yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Philip. I mean, he is uh, just a monster, and he's got such a great sound and tone, and that's of course his feel and his uh, fingers. But it's awesome. It's really awesome, especially in a tiny little place like this, <laughs> where you're going to hear everything right here. Yeah. You know, it's not. There's no room for it to disperse at all. It's going to be really cool. I hope the volume doesn't go up too much, Ty, because it was it was just a brilliant, right idea. No, it it won't. Um, and that's what I was going to mention earlier. Um, in the last few weeks, the stage volume has come down dramatic, because Steve went to in ears, and uh, for the whole show, and so uh, our front of house guy uh, Carlos has convinced Steve to bring his his volume down so much that for the first time in almost 23 years of playing, it's it's like weirdly different. Because I can actually, it, it's less stressful. It's less anxiety. Um, because before, no matter, and I've used in-ears forever, but it was, I was all, even with my in-ears, I was always battling the stage bar, mm -hmm. which was incredibly loud. And now it is so manageable that I really realized how over playing I was because I was like oh, I, I hear myself but I gotta play harder because I need to hear more and well, then you realize well I'm two shows in and my arms are fatigued my hands are fatigued and then Steve went to ears and we brought everything down it's like this is how I always practice at home relax yep. not pushing that's not and not at the end but the thing I got was you guys were genuinely having a great time and it was there wasn't that tension and the bit you get from from the sound moving so much so I think to, to talk gear for a moment, technically wise, we're in a great golden era of um, rock roll where you can just actually turn it down but still have a great time. I do struggle, actually. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, just a little bit. Um, with the ears, I have always had a problem. And it doesn't matter what, if there's a mic on the cab or there's something else. Uh, I'm using a direct box, whatever it may be. I've always struggled with in ears. And the the feel and the responsiveness not being quite the same, um, you know, like my cabs right now are are barely pushing anything. That's the diff. That's the problem. Without the without the air moving those you know paper cones and everything, you're, the sound's not going to be the same. It's captured, uh, but it's still it's still not quite. The same. But it's close, and it's worth trying, and that's what we're doing. Well, yeah, it's really nice. Um, Can we talk about the guitar you're playing at the moment? Yeah. So you brought a custom shop. Yeah, well, I've got two PRSs, two PRS7 strings. 
um, a Kramer. Oh, wow. I've got this gorgeous snakeskin Kramer Barada. I saw it, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, an, it's really a fun guitar, and it's really fun to play, and it sounds great. Um, but yes, yeah, so and then I brought a uh, Fender Custom Shop. And, uh, you know, we were talking earlier that Strats have always been my Desert Island guitar. But being in Steve's band for all this time, uh, the music never really called for it. So all this time, two decades plus, it's always been humbuckers and 24 frets, and that led to other guitars, you know, DRSs and Ibanez and whatever else it is. Um, and fantastic. But this show has called for quite a few songs that need single chords. So I've been, I brought out my uh, custom shop tender and it's awesome. It just feels, you know, it's 21 frets. It's a vintage style bridge and you'll see it. I, Steve and I do some trading and I'm beating the crap out of it. And it is awesome. It's really awesome. It just feels like, I don't know, it feels like hell. It was interesting to see the, the arsenal that Steve is using has, has changed quite a bit or what, how you said it, let, um, has been adjusted to what his songs call for. I mean, he's playing a uh, three single coil kind of AT100 style guitar with a monkey grip inside and uh, also with sometimes with much less gain. Yeah, and a Schofield. A, a Schofield, of course, semi hollow. Uh, and my eye. Yeah. Oh, I just knew that moment, this yeah. is going to be interesting. I was uh, yeah, freaking out on the, like, the application of the gear. But it's so good for me. So unexpected. <laughs> reviewing the gear and talking about the gear, but rarely actually getting to experience someone using that gear. And I thought, okay, my, my vision of Steve Vai playing at Schofield, this is, this has to be uh, at least interesting, the very least. And of course it was, it was way more interesting. Yeah. That guitar is awesome. The Schofield Ibanez, I don't, I don't know what the model is, but, uh, gorgeous guitar that sounds great. Plays great. Not, not, not going so far. Now, if, if Steve tells you about the set list, how do you decide what to take on tour? I mean, it's the set list. It's basically the that, set list. That's, that's, that's okay. the only thing that dictates what gear I choose for these tours. Uh, because again, if the song requires uh, a single coil, then I'm not going to play a humbucker guitar. Of course. And again, this set list has quite a few single coil uh, needs, which is why I brought the Fender out. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's all the set list, the the pedals that are on the floor, the what they're providing, the amp, what it's providing, um, everything. It's all about the set list. And you see the set list. Do you already have certain guitars in mind or, and amps as well, or do you kind of puzzle that together at home during during some during rehearsal, during rehearsal. Well, before rehearsals? Okay. Um, because we learn everything individually okay. before rehearsals, and in doing that, in learning each of the parts, you're not only learning the notes you're learning uh, in the rhythms and everything else that goes along with it. You're also learning what does, what does that part require tone-wise. So, so we play a song called uh, Greenish Blues on his new record. And for me, that required single coils, it required the Strat, and it required a rotary type of sound. Um, so I'm using the Strymon uh, Mobius mm -hmm. to get that. And you'll hear it, you know, you'll hear it tonight. Other parts, uh, like in Zeus and Chains, I need a seven string, so I'm using the PRS, but it's in drop A. And I need that through a chorus, which I'm also using the Mobius for. Uh, all the gain is from, I'm using a Friedman. You know, I knew I was going to use a Friedman no matter what, and those are my go-to amps, and that they've been my go-to amps for 10 years now. Or, um, you know, mine are the 50-watt versions. Mm -hmm. That I play usually, this whole box 50s. But Steve, with his stuff, it really does require 100 watts. Mm -hmm. However, now that we are so quiet and, and using more direct solutions, um, which I'm using the two notes, mm -hmm. by the way, I don't know if you saw it, um, which has been fantastic. Uh, I really could use the 50 watts. So I'm thinking of the head to the US tour. I'm like, maybe I'll switch them out. Okay. And maybe I'll leave the 100 watt at home and go back to my what's more my speed, but it's not about me. It's about my job here in this band is to play the parts uh, like Steve and uh, make them sound like they're intended. Mm -hmm. Bring, bring the record to life essentially. So yeah, it's all, it's all about the set list that determines the, uh, the gear that's out. Here. It's not willy nilly. It's not just like, hey, I feel like bringing a strat out, you know, 
I haven't. <laughs> I've never brought a Strat on tour. Oh, wow. Well, it's pretty little. Um, this is the first time. And again, it's just because the set list called for it. Uh -huh. Sweet. Yeah. That's, that's super interesting. Can we talk uh, a moment about the article that you've got coming up? Or yeah. maybe you're already out in Guitar World. It's, I, 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 oh, I okay. think it's Guitar World. <laughs> uh, and it's not out. I don't know when it's coming out. But yes, we're, we did one on mental health. Yeah. You seem so relaxed on this tour uh, and in a very positive way. Yeah. Um, you seem a different Dave to the Dave we spoke to last. Drugs. Okay, because <laughs> then we'll, we'll check that later. <laughs> so, this after on mental health, well, what's the, and I hate to be facetious, what's the point of it? Yeah. Well, going back to what we were talking about with COVID, you know, a lot of people were facing new challenges. You know, all of every gig worker lost their work. How do you make a living? And, mm -hmm. you know, how do you answer this? And it, 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 can be and was uh, mentally taxing, you know, you had to kind of unlock new thought patterns and, you know, just find solutions. Uh, but that can be a very arduous and, 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 uh, dynamic process. You know, it, 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 it's, 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 it can be a lot of trial and error and it can weigh on you. And a lot of people, um, had a really rough time, mm. you know, I, as I said, I, and I, I'm not kidding. I mean, staying home was fine with me. Uh, again, just time-wise, it was fine. But I know a lot of people had a really hard time with it. Mm. You know, people with kids and they're used to the balance in their life having been Closer. gone to work, you know, and getting out of the house for eight hours a day. <laughs> uh, now everybody's at home full time or was at home full time and that proved to be challenging you know but we saw the flip the great resignation because people didn't want to go back to work they figured out how to make it work mm -hmm. and where there's a will there's a way and even when there's not a will you may be shown the way as we all were during uh the pandemic um you know i know i know quite a few people that didn't make it through the pandemic who they died either from covid or over related things, a few suicides, you know, and that sucks. The, uh, personally, it just made me take inventory and not even really COVID. It was like I said earlier, the passing of my father last year really just made me take inventory. And I am a different person now because of that. Uh, I don't take anything seriously anymore. It's not that, that doesn't mean I don't care about, you know, that doesn't mean I don't care about, I, I care about everything that I need to but I do not put the same weight on anything that I used to because time is passing whether you do that thing 100% plus the stress or you just do it 100%. Yep. So I'm out here playing with Steve 100% every day, but I don't have the stress involved that I, I, I put on it myself. Wasn't supposed to be there, it didn't, wasn't required. Uh, for whatever reason, you know, when we all do that with certain things, it's like, this has to be perfect and blah, 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 blah. Just, just do it the way you mean it to be done, but it doesn't have to be stressful. And that's, it's, it's hard to kind of decipher what that means for everybody, but I know for me, it's just learning the material, going to rehearsals, being out here. I don't, I don't have the same weight on it that I used to in the last 20 something years. It certainly feels that way sitting in here and then chatting with you really, it does, you feel like you're very grounded and, uh, and still focused, but very relaxed. It's, you know, listen, life's going to end for all of us at some point. We'll have fun, do your thing, but it doesn't mean you have to be a psycho about it. And I was a spaz. I was just neurotic, anxiety ridden, stress ridden. 24 seven for the last 30 plus years, um, for, and I'm not kidding for the better part of ever since I started playing guitar, because, and a lot of people get into that because you're so into that passion and you're like, I have to make it, I have to make it, you know, and, 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 and you sacrifice, which is necessary. Everybody, you got to work hard. You got to be diligent. You're going to have to sacrifice if you want to get anywhere. But, um, Looking back now, I'm like, man, it didn't have to be quite such a burden. Mm -hmm. 
It's supposed to be fun. Uh, and I made it very stressful. But, you know, it's funny because I look back at my teens. I started playing when I was 10. And I, I might have mentioned it before. I had an original band. And we went into a studio when I was 13. And we did a full original record. And we did another one when I was 16. There was no stress about it. It was just, this is what we're going to do. I didn't care if it was, you know, of course it wasn't great or anything. But it was something. I mean, we were accomplishing our goals at such a young age. Right. And then you start approaching, like, the late teens into career mode. Um... And it's like, oh my God, he's not a guy getting this perfectly fun. I don't know. My perspective has changed a lot. Um, I just don't take it. I, I don't, I, nothing has the same weight on it as it did before. And then that comes and it comes to people at different times, you know, through a death, some sort of life changing event, uh, whatever it may be. You know, you said you lost your job a while ago, you got in your car, you started driving around and play. You did what you wanted to do. I don't know if there was stress involved, but it worked out. You said it was the best time of your life, Chris. It was. I mean, the only stress we had was, am I going to earn enough money to pay for the food and the beer? <laughs> and I never failed. Even when we got shut down after two minutes, the police came, you know, you find somewhere else. Or, or some people, were, we were in France and there was so, so much people, that they took us in, you know, and you, we, we met people. And sitting here now, I realized that I need to do that more often and just... Just not throw caution into the wind, but certainly all the cliches. Open the doors, you know, emotionally, and not worry about about stuff. Could probably take some some advice from my kids. Yeah, the doors are never closed, so it's never closed. Yeah, you know, just have fun. Just have fun, and it's it's a world where you just like I said, you walk around, and people are so concerned with the the image. And the numbers, the content, and et cetera, et cetera. Great. You know, if that's your focus, work hard, and it'll pay off. But you can snap a picture one way, and you can snap a picture another way. <laughs> one way is going to be fun. The other way is going to be, has to be perfect. You got to do this because I need those numbers. And when you focus so much on that stuff, that's when it starts losing its fun. And that's when you burn out. Perfect. Sure. Yeah. Early on, they've said he checked out of rock and roll. And I'd be curious to hear what, like... Musically, is is is, is um, in the future lying ahead of you, and then the next year, like you said, you had Ben. I'm not ben. even gonna say. I'm ben. not. I'm not even gonna mention it because there's stuff there, but I'm not even thinking about it right now. Okay, you know, um, it is weird to say, but I never listen to guitar music anymore. I listen to the pure focus playlist on Apple Music permanently. That's it. Because that's a ambient thing. I, I listen to cinema slow. Wow, baby. It's one. And it's, again, it's because the, my life has been so stressful since last November. And um, you, you got to find things to put you in a better headspace. So for some reason, that stuff has worked tremendously. So... I'm not, I don't want to talk about what I'm working on because it has something to do with that, but I don't know if I'm going to follow through with it. Okay. Because I'm still trying to find a way to satisfy my guitar nerd in me <laughs> um, and make it part of that. And it certainly can be done, and it's been done. You listen to that playlist, you're going to hear guitar all over it, um, but it's not the main focus, and it's not the main instrument. And I'm not going to just copy what's been done. I'm trying to find my own way with it. So that's why I'm saying I don't want to say, oh, next year this is coming out and then this is coming out. I don't know. I really, I really am not sure. But I, you know, there's always I'm always going to play guitar. I'm always going to play guitar music. It just hasn't been my focus okay. as as a listener mm -hmm. lately because I I needed a departure from everything, from from everything. I needed a departure. And that has proven to just be amazing. I, I can't recommend that playlist enough. At least for me. I don't know. Some people might listen to it and be like, oh, my God, this is terrible. But it depends on where you are in life. But, uh, you know, I give a listen to a lot of different stuff. Like, of course, Steve's music, Joe's new record, uh, Andy Timmons' new record. I'm trying to think what else I've been listening to. I, I don't know, but it's not, it's, it comes and goes, you know, it's not, it's not the focus, but I've done that before. 
as a as an artist, as a writer, I've gone through periods where I refuse to listen to guitar music because I don't want any of it to infiltrate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd like to pull from other influences, or, you know, just, but it's all mood. You know, to me, that's what I don't have to, I don't have to write guitar music if that's not what I'm feeling. That would be fake. And the music would probably come out really bad. So, I mean, that's, this could, could have some, some very well perceived cathartic uh, effect where you just, you know, pull yourself away from the usual stuff and kind of open your eyes for what's, What's, what's out there, you know, apart from guitar music, apart from rock and roll or checking out rock and roll. And we talked about the early on kind of changing perspective and kind of look at the big picture that's out there. You know, you, had a, you have a great opening band tonight. That's, that's music that people usually don't listen to, right? Admire, yeah. yeah. That's, he pulls from a lot of different cultures, you know, so Anish and Middle Eastern and stuff, and you listen to it, it's just beautiful. You know, it's really cool stuff. And I love that kind of concept where it's just you're pulling from your core, your, your wheelhouse, but... You're pulling from a few other that, a few other spots as well, and it's really really interesting. Chat, yeah. Okay. All right. If we you, we make a an interview. We are not here yet. We make a an interview. Okay. Außen rum and then vorne then. Einmal hier rum rechts and then vorne. Then here. You want to Steve I. Here raus auf die Straße hier vor and then da ist der Eingang. Genau. The worst. <laughs> We're having a hard time finding the entrance, which is kind of hard here because there are several entrances. Kind of. Yeah, I'm surprised that we didn't get more. If you saw any of the other video that we made, then um, we had quite a few disruptions. Oh yeah. Um, I think we should probably. Yeah. What time is it? Yeah, I've gotta get one to seven forty five. Yeah. Well, we can continue when I'm home and uh, check in. Then you know things will continue to evolve, and I'm sure they'll be different then as well. That would be lovely. That's life. Yeah. Gotta evolve. Yeah. The only constant is change. The <laughs> <Arizona's. laughs> <Yeah. Tell> that. <laughs> That's a old cliche, of course. And I think that's, I would assume everybody knows that, but I know a lot of people don't want any change. They're afraid. They're afraid. Yeah. And anxiety. They're just comfortable. Everybody's like that. Yeah. You know, you come. You have your comfort zone, and that comes from stabilization of life but it's going to keep going you're not staying the same age well uh and it can be something very comfortable if you're if you're in a situation it's amazing if you're in a situation where you say everything is fine right yeah. you're a great family i can see when i just <laughs> so steve steve is that is it so all right <laughs> you didn't say that either sorry i didn't catch it but i promise you steve i was on the last <laughs> as if there were some neighbors making too much noise <laughs> No, but it can be just something that's, that's, that you want a moment, like a moment that you want to, n to never go away. You know, it's just like a perfect moment or a perfect period of time. But like you just said, eventually either you are changing or you're forced, you're forced to change. And this is the only constant, right? That there will be something that changes either your body or surrounding. And the pandemic really showed a lot of people that they're afraid of change. No. Well, we won't get into that. Nope. Oh, no. We don't have to. We'll do that next. No, we don't. I, you know what? Live and let live. That's the thing. But there's a big group of people who want to live and make you live the way they do as well. Uh -huh. And fuck that all day, every day. You know, live and let live only. That, that, that's the only thing that could be. Whatever works for you, great. Doesn't mean it's going to work for anybody else. That's right. Uh, you yeah. know, that's just how I look at it. Yeah, everybody do whatever you want. <laughs> don't shove it on me. <laughs> And we want. I would love to talk about that, but that's a whole. That's probably another channel, maybe. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't really discuss politics, religion, like all that stuff. It's so personal. Yeah, and, and great. You know, whatever you do, great. It's fine. Oh, but you can't expect everybody else to do it. Well, all of us will. Live and let live. Hey, wait a minute. Thank you very much. Listen, give me, get a few more beers in me and, and they'll keep coming. <laughs> I can't we're staying on this thing. Just give it a few hours. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me. Appreciate Please so Thank you. Give some love today wherever you give love these days. If not necessarily in the comments, just send it back. Yeah, you feel it.
Stories Podcast, your number one show for everything guitar.